people ask me, you know, how did you become interested in collector cars? I didn't set out to become interested in collector cars. The cars that I drove became collector cars. Mm -hmm. I always looked out for interesting used cars. And this is the thing I'm so excited about, you know, something which is a big focus for us here at the Audrain, the whole idea of young- Sit in the Bitzerini at my height, okay? I'm a, sh I'm a shocking 6'1", but when you sit in the Bitzerini, <laughs> it seems like you're much smaller than you are. I can't see over the hood. I can't see over the wheel. Oh, Ooh, yeah, let's, <laughs> not gonna yeah, go, let's there. go there. <laughs> oh, boy. Episode 36 is when it all comes to an end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a nice run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so welcome back to another episode of In the Driver's Seat with ABS. Before we start off, remember to hit that link in our bio. We are trying to all grow mustaches here. I don't know about myself, but we're all participating in Movember, and we have uh, a team link down there. So join our team, donate. We really want to raise as much money as we can for all of the causes. Um, and actually, the more likes this video gets, the faster our mustaches grow. Yes. I've heard that. I, that point. means we need a lot of likes for my mustache. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got work to do. So next to us here is a very familiar face here on the Audrain Museum Network, Mr. Donald Osborne. Hold your applause, please. Hold your applause. <laughs> yeah. We finally we finally got Donald on. He's been he's been evading us for a long time. Thirty five episodes. And but who's counting? And Sean, I just want to say it's really great to finally have uh, the face of the Audrey network on uh, next to Donald. So yeah, we're no, happy I'm, to have I'm you. I'm happy to be here. Um, <laughs> it's been great. It's been good two years. Yep. But uh, yes. I'm, uh, as you guys know, I'm very, very nervous about being here. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Um, because, you know, I had to do a couple of tryouts before I got here. Yes. Um, you know, seven episodes with uh, Mark Green and Cars Yeah, uh, with Wayne Carini and Jay Ward on their podcast, sure. with uh, Matt Farah and Spike Ferris. And so I think. I might be ready for you guys. So yeah. just, uh, if, if I make a mistake, <laughs> just just help me out. Here. We'll help you out. We'll walk help you through it. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm very, very nervous. We'll be so the judge of that. What is the point of this whole podcast thing? Well, we're just here. Uh, That's what our viewers are time. trying to find <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying to get to the point for almost two years now. And uh, here we are. We needed a little warm up. Two-year warm up. We got Donald on. It's no yeah. problem. Um, no, but thank you for sitting with us. And, uh, you know, I think we just wanted to sit down. A lot of people see you on our channel and other um you know jay leno's garage etc and i think this is a good opportunity to maybe for us to ask you some questions that you don't often get asked for mm. some viewers to um know you a little better i think this will be good you well, know because we fantastic. spend a lot of time with you you know maybe too, too much, much time, yeah. yeah i was gonna say my, my desk is right outside of donald's office it's a, it's a lot my, <laughs> my first question is how terrible was it to track me around italy during the millimilia for four days oh my god that was unbelievable i done the millimilia four times this is the fourth time with uh with you antonio and it's an amazing event it is absolutely epic you know you're behind the wheel 13 hours some days and it was really terrific to watch you cover 1200 miles of Italy snacking all the way in a tiny 500 kilo car with 46 horsepower it was absolutely it was 600 you know? kilos after I put in all my snacks each day well, that's the thing I couldn't understand it's you know without giving making this TMI yes I could not snack the way you do and Come not on, like Ken. take a break every 40 kilometers uh, somehow, very important but, you know. question did you guys speak Italian or English I spoke Italian. Um, uh, Antonio responded uh, in uh, his version of uh, English. Um, uh, lo so che è molto difficile per te di parlare in inglese perché uh, la macchina era molto piccola e non c'è abbastanza acqua o cibo. And Il cibo è più importante per me. Ah, sì, più importante della benzina. Perché io devo mangiare. Same, Same we need subtitles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, we actually had a lot of fun on the Millimilia. Um, I always say after I've completed one, okay, that's it. I never need to do it again. And then probably about a day later, you think, well, wouldn't it be fun if, or do you remember that great moment when, you know, you don't remember the fact that, you know, the soles of my shoes melted the first day off of my feet. And, uh, and the fact that Antonio is a terrific guy. He is amazing on the road, on the track, on a motorcycle, in a car. Um, 
direction giving and taking is mm. not really his thing. He does not take direction well. He tells me it's like, oh, would we Hell yeah. <laughs> it, it, the other thing is Nervous. that, you know, somewhere <laughs> on the roads of Italy are about 500 pens just on the road that just <laughs> flew out of his hand, dropped out of the car. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, had, we had our favorite moment in the entire event was when literally the hand of God himself came down. Antonio's got the pen in his hand. It flies out of his hand. The wind pushes it back into his hand. He catches it again. Wow. It literally you need to make this turn. into my hand. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. So incredible. Yeah, it was astonishing. So, yeah, that's the middle of the middle. It sums up the middle of the middle, yeah. I think. Yeah. Going off of that, Italy, Italian, as a kid who grew up in New York, New York City, how d- wh- where did your connection to, I mean, you're, you're, those who know you, obviously you love all cars, but you have a special connection to specifically 50s Italian cars. I'm, I, I, I know that's the stereotype for you, but um, you know, you've written a book. Hey, Donald, that's, Donald that's is an not English a and guy. Italian. Um, but you, you obviously have, you, you have a place in Italy. You have a very strong connection to Italy. And as a kid who grew up in New York City, how did that connection occur? Um, actually, growing up in New York City was part of that connection. I grew up uh, first in the, um, the what's called the Twin Bridges uh, area of Manhattan, between yeah. the Manhattan and Brooklyn Bridges. And it's right next to Little Italy, Chinatown, City Hall, that district. So I grew up in a place where there are a lot of ethnic peoples. Yeah. And so I had a lot of Italian neighbors. And so sort of the sense of Italy was with me from a very young age. Um, as for my love for Italian cars, that is a slightly more complicated thing because, as you said, I love all cars. Right. I mean, I've owned cars from France, Germany, Japan, America, uh, and, of course, Italy and England. Um, but it's one of those things that a lot of the culture really attracts me to it. It's the spirit of Italy, you know, Antonio notwithstanding. Um, it's, it's the spirit of Italy, the, the architecture, clothes, food, wine, uh, just the spirit of it. And I see that in the cars of Italy. And I think that um, when I was a little kid, I used to dream about uh, having a time machine or a transporter. And I find that when I drive cars that really have great national character, it just takes me to that place. Right. I could be here in Rhode Island, I could be in New York, could be in California. When I'm behind the wheel of a great Italian car, I'm in Italy. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. And um, yeah, no, that, that's good. Where, where was it, when you were a little kid, where did you transport to? With your time traveler? Well, I transported everywhere. I remember uh, a great dream of mine had been, um, you know, it's very funny, when I was uh, first born and first growing up, uh, we lived in a project in New York, in mm-hmm. lower Manhattan, and we had a three-bedroom apartment. And so my parents had their bedroom, my sister had a bedroom, and my two brothers and I shared a bedroom. Correct. And yeah. we had a bed for my oldest brother and a bunk bed for me and my uh, middle brother. And uh, I slept on top, of course, and I always wanted to get a steering wheel so that I could play that I was driving a car with the dashboard of being my, my bed head. And uh, my father kept saying that's a ridiculous idea, so he never did it, uh, which is why when you visit my office today, yeah, I have this have, obsession with yep, steering, steering wheels. Right. And that directly comes from my childhood. Um, uh, I would love to get in cars and just drive myself wherever I wanted to go. I was manic about reading my older brother's car magazines. Mm-hmm. And so I would read uh, Competition Press and Auto Week and road and track and car and driver and sports car graphic. Yeah. And I'd imagine that I was in all these places and, and pretending to know how to actually pronounce the names. I was yeah. shocked years later as an adult when I actually learned how to pronounce uh, the name of Olivier Jean de Bien. Like, ooh, <laughs> and, and you have Citroen. That, that picture of you as you, with your brother b- building that model car, right? When you were, how old were you in that? I was eight years old in yeah. that picture and it's a, it's a terrific thing. I often say, I don't remember being that happy as a child, but obviously <laughs> I was. At least certainly that afternoon, we were finishing building a model of the Lotus 29, mm. the car that Jim Clark drove yeah. at uh, Indy. And I am just ecstatic. And my oldest brother, who is 16 years old in the picture, is saying, well, this has been fun. Gosh, are we done yet? <laughs> Which is sort of the story of my life because yeah. that happens. You see that every day with people saying, oh my gosh, is Donald going to be more enthusiastic about that? Um, <laughs> it's funny because you talk to some, you know, I guess you, you talk to kids who grew up in the city and not many of them even get a driver's license um, or have a affection for cars. So it's, was your family a car family or did you just get the bug absolutely not I, i'm yeah. not quite sure i think that we should do some scientific surveys yeah. to figure out um how we sort of got into it i was actually thinking about this i actually did some i won't say preparation for this because that would be the wrong thing to say <laughs> um but i did some preparation for this. Okay. i was thinking wow. about i think about the fact that 
getting to know you guys here has been terrific for me. I'm not just saying that because I'm on your show. Um, I we, think that we paid it, them off. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's absolutely fascinating to to watch people who are young, who are totally passionate, who have had the incredible fortune to have the access to cars and car people the way you have. I did not have that growing up. Right. At, at your age, um, yes, okay, I was, I guess I was on, on my sixth car or so by your age. But nonetheless, growing up in Manhattan and then later in Queens, we didn't buy a car until I was 12 years old. Right. We didn't need one. He had the yeah, subway and the that's buses. My, that's what I was. And uh, I was taken into the world of cars, I said, largely through my older brother, who was a car enthusiast, and through the world of magazines and books in the, in the library, which I devoured incessantly. And so when I went to that first auto show, the New York Auto Show in 1964, I was absolutely blown away. And the Italian car connection actually sort of started there because I saw lots of cars that I regularly saw in the street. Yeah. But then I saw some cars I had only ever seen in magazines. And there mm. they were, Alfa Romeos and Maseratis and yeah. Ferraris. Like, oh my God, that Citroëns. Yeah. Uh, no Skodas though, sorry, Sam. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I learned about Skoda later. And when did, when did the 63 Mons of Spider come into play? Uh, that was my sophomore year in college when I got my first car, uh, 1963 Corvair Monza convertible, black, red interior, white top. Uh, again, for a kid from New York City, the most exotic thing you could imagine because very few people in New York had convertibles. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so this is a car that I, I always loved, again, because the Corvair to me was the most European of American cars. Right. Rear engine, the great design. Um, and they're and amazing cars to drive. To drive. Amazing yes. cars to drive. Absolutely. Uh, Ralph Nader notwithstanding. I mean, they're, 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 they're no more dangerous to drive than a 356 or a Beetle. Um, except for the fact, of course, I love uh, telling my Porsche friends that. And I love 356s. Yep. But that, you know, the Corvair had far more power than the 356. Yeah. So, yes, you could get into more trouble in a Corvair if you didn't pay attention to tire inflation pressure. We did a, you did a great does. video on um, the Corvair that we have in the collection. And uh, you can see that here. That car is absolutely astonishing. I love that car so much. And uh, one day we'll have another Corvair. Um, but it was uh, something. You know, you talk about um, my connection with Italian cars. Um, my first car, obviously, was an American car. My next cars were all German. <laughs> so it was uh, a very interesting uh, thing. So. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. That's funny. So uh, with, with the Italian car connection, and obviously you speak Italian very well, you were an opera singer. Is that why you learned how to speak Italian or? Uh, yes and no. I took Italian in high school first uh, before I actually really started singing seriously. And of course, uh, as an opera singer going to school, I had to study uh, the languages. One of the reasons why I didn't go to a conservatory, I went to a university instead, the University of Hartford Hart College of Music, because I had to take the university language courses in addition to taking uh, singing diction courses. So I took uh, Italian, German, and French. And um, again, it's about the culture. If you're going to be a good performer, you have to understand what the culture is that this music comes from and, and, and what the characters mean. Mm -hmm. And so that also sort of more fully <coughs> immersed me in the cars of those cultures. Right, right. Well, you talk, you talk about culture, and I think car culture is something that has been big um, since 100 years ago when you were born. Um, <laughs> but, um, 120, please. Yeah, I look fantastic. No, yeah, of course, of course. Um, but, you know, you come from, in the car world, a unique place. Um, you've done different things. You haven't been doing cars your whole life. Um, I guess my question is, A, why cars? And then B, kind of coming to present day, what makes the Audrain so special because we talk about how fortunate we all are to have this position. What makes this space unique in the car world? Well, to you, you, who's, you who's, who's, who's been there? This is all we know. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, the various things that I've done and I often joke about the fact that I've made five 90 degree turns uh, in my life mm -hmm. uh, through various uh, careers. Cars were always in the background and I think that all the various things that I've done in terms of Singing, exactly, do, do, do they have a graphic <laughs> yeah. play here? Uh, mm -hmm. um, in terms of singing, um, retailing, advertising, um, marketing, communications, um, even the work that I've done with uh, nonprofits in the um, performing arts space. Mm -hmm. All those things have come together in this job. 
which for me is absolutely astonishing. And the fact that it's here in Newport, that's one of the things that really attracted me to Newport because again, I love history. Mm -hmm. So to be able to see all these cars and experience them and share them in this incredible setting, I think means a lot to me. And I think it means a lot to the people that come to the museum that watch our videos on YouTube and uh, see us at shows. Um, we have a connection that's really about experiencing the cars, using the cars, driving the cars, and that, I think, is one of the things that makes me most excited about being here because that's what I'm all about. Right, right. I think you look at a lot of other events um, and a lot, other, a lot of other spaces and uh, around the world that have similar outreach to what we do, and it's it, it coming from a different light. Like, everyone here from the top down loves what they're doing and wants to grow what we are and bring us to a new place. And um, it's just, it's, it's fun to be along for the ride, right? It's, it's providing access is what is most exciting to me. And again, coming back to what I said about you three guys, it's the fact that you have the opportunity, which so many of your peers don't, to sample, yeah, the latest supercar and all of that, but also great classics from the 1930s, the veteran cars. Mm -hmm. you, know, you see the entire range of cars and you can get a sense of, for instance, what a supercar is in its time, mm -hmm. in its age. Right. You know, you think about some of the veteran cars that could go 100 miles per hour. Oh, oh absolutely. Brakes. You know, so that insane. is a supercar. And that's what I say the most, especially with like, you know, cars like the 356 Carrera 2. And for those, it's a 4 cam, 130 uh, horsepower car from 1964, Porsche. First car, first Porsche with disc brakes. Um, but that car is fast today. Yeah, so dude, like going moves. back to your time capsule, or uh, time machine, like I, that's what I do. I'm like, I can't even imagine how amazing you would have felt in 1964 driving this, and how ahead of its time it was, yeah, and com how compared to what America was building at the time, exactly. and how such a yeah. small four cylinder car could propel you down the road. And and, and, so and it's insane. and it's so much fun now. And you know the car, you know I was born in '90. Think about that. You know that car was way ahead of my time, right? So. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's what I enjoy the most. Like you were saying, is driving and experiencing, smelling, feeling these cars, being able to see them be brought back to life uh, in restoration, and um, and then again sharing them because you know a big part for me. And I've said this in earlier podcasts. You know, there was no social media when I was growing up. You know, so the only way I saw cars was w when I would go to a car dealership. You know, I would watch a television show. You know, I we talked about when I first met. I, I first saw you on um, "What's My Car Worth" with Keith Martin. That was the first time I was exposed yeah, to you on Velocity. So, same. I used to. That was my exposure to cars, and I used to beg my dad to bring me to car dealerships. But the biggest thing was when the the very first time I saw a Ferrari Enzo was in like 2000. It was the year it came out, so it was at 04. Yeah, like 04. 04 and yeah. I was in New Jersey 03, and I was at a Land Rover dealership and across the street was um, a Porsche dealership, Paul Miller. And the guy pulled in in the Enzo and I literally ran ran across the highway to go see it because like, when are you going to see this? And he let me sit in it. He started it. That's so, so cool. Now I have you, we all have that opportunity to share and that for me is the best part well, of this. And I think, I think, you know, a lot of people in the car community, maybe not a lot, but there are people who don't realize how easy it is to get a kid hooked on cars. Like if oh, a kid's yeah. in the museum and it's like, you want to sit in it? It's like, it's they thumb. freak out. The parents freak out. Everybody's freaking out. Pictures, <laughs> yeah. videos. It's like, well, stop the press. It's like, it's a huge deal. And it's like, for me, even like if my babysitter brought their new car over, it was a big deal. Yeah, right. So The, uh, the babysitter it, or the car? The babysitter. Oh, hello. And the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I think that's what, you know, the Audrain has, what we do best is being able to share from the events that we do to, you know, I think from the Concours aspect, you know, the Concours across the world kind of get this stuffy nature, um, you know, kind of notion that, you know, you have to be a certain class of person to be able to go to these events or whatever it may be. And well, that's what's so great about cars and coffee. Right. But I'm saying is that I think the Audrain has really we've we've really opened up um one of my um favorite moments was when you and jay and um kyrie am i saying his name right kyrie, kyrie yeah yeah kyrie you know this is a kid who 
loves Donald, has looked up to Donald his entire life. He's young. How old is he? He's eight. He's eight. So right when you were building that Lotus and, um, you know, Donald was kind enough to bring him to the Concord, bring him on stage with Jay. And, you know, he's wearing a bow tie like Donald. So these, the, this kid is going to be literally, Donald's going to be gone. You know, we're going to have Kyrie. We're going to be working for Kyrie. So, yeah. <laughs> Jay, you know, Jay announced that he'd already found his, <laughs> his new partner in, yeah. in cars. And, and, and that's the thing that, um, that with Kai, <clears throat> excuse me, um, he and his parents live in Connecticut. Yeah. And I met them at a Cars and Coffee and they said they drove from Connecticut an hour and a half because Kai wanted to come to a Cars and Coffee, possibly meet me, but just to go to the Cars and yeah. Coffee as well, to see cars and see motorcycles. Um, and uh, I recall that uh, one Cars and Coffee, I had my uh, Roma there and let him sit in it and hit the start button and all that. And then he got to uh, sit on Antonio's Ducati. Oh boy. And it was absolutely astonishing. It's like, I thought his, his, his mind was mm. going to explode. <laughs> his, uh, his mom probably wasn't yeah, too happy. His, his mind was going to explode and his mom was going to make me explode after she had killed <laughs> yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Putting him on two wheels. <laughs> but, but it is that uh, part of it. And I'm glad you mentioned Cars and Coffee. It's in the context of how I feel about being here at the Audrain. The cars and coffee scene is one of the most exciting to me after spending, and again, no disrespect to my friends in Southern California, after spending 11 years living there. And so many people around the world think of Southern California as the center of car culture. Right. And it is a very big uh, hotbed of car culture. To come here to Rhode Island and experience the car culture of Rhode Island and Southern Massachusetts and, and Eastern Connecticut is astonishing because these are people who really are passionate about their cars. They yeah. drive them even in the rain. Oh right. my God. And they all want to share. They don't come to Cars and Coffee to talk to their friends and sort of stand in a little click. They walk around. They look at other people's cars. Mm -hmm. And and so many people have thanked me, and I'm sure the same is, is uh, true for you. So many people have thanked me for the Audrain for bringing this car culture to Rhode Island. Yeah. And I always respond, we brought nothing except yeah. a space for yeah. the car community to come together the way they haven't had before. Yeah. yeah. And that's amazing. Yeah. I love it. You go, to, you go to events. Sorry, Sean. Uh, but not sorry. Um, uh, you go to events even around the state, and it's their clicks. So you've got the tuner guys, you got the Porsche guys, you got the Corvette guys, you got everything. But we're the only ones that bring everybody together, which is really cool. And people ask all the time, well, you know, why am I parked next to this minivan? It's like, because they're at the event and they yeah. enjoy their car and they enjoy coming. It's not about the car. Right. And also what's so unique about the New England Northeast is that a lot of, a lot of cars that come to our cars and coffee and come to our show you know this is like a third generation car that's been pulled out yeah. you know their parents bought it on their last dollar it's been in a you know we have a car park place that uh, the volkswagen beetle that um the current owner's parents bought new and it was in a house fire and it was the only thing that survived and wow. you know you, you just a lot of the cars that come to our shows have a story and a lot of these cars have been there their whole life that yeah. personal connection yeah yep. a lot of the you know southern california cars you know they end up there so that's what i've sort of seen so in in your career as you progress through your career were you were you working to buy cars was was <laughs> your was the point of working to buy cars i think that's kind of always been my my drive no pun intended <laughs> um well um no and yes um my car collecting because you've had a lot been. of cars. If you could list them after, if you can, <laughs> I think that'd be a fun, fun we'll game. We'll have to do like a list. It'd be like credits. <laughs> well, again, you, you have to remember, um, again, growing up when I did, and uh, I grew up, you grew up without social media. I grew up at a time where there were no computers. So I first Damn. got into computers back I when, when, when I was, I was writing, I was writing <laughs> programs in DBase 3 yeah. to do staffing at, at Macy's, which I was running at the time. And... Um, so I first got um, introduced to the whole spreadsheet. Right. Uh, so Excel was brand new. And so I thought, oh, you know what? I'll list all the cars I've owned. Oh boy. And I kept up the spreadsheet for about a year and a half. And I realized that there were so many cars I had forgotten. <laughs> and then I realized I couldn't actually do this because it would be endless. And if I, uh, if I was still working on that spreadsheet, it'd probably be on sell like, you know, line 10,004. <laughs> um, and I became, Interested. People ask me, you know, how did you become interested in collector cars? I didn't set out to become interested in collector cars. The cars that I drove 
became collector cars. Mm -hmm. I always looked out for interesting used cars. And this is the thing I'm so excited about, you know, something which is a big focus for us here at the Audrain, the whole idea of young timers, collecting moving right. forward. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people get into their heads that, you know, oh, that's just a 20 year old used car. It's a 20 year old car who through time will be a 50 year old has, car. Well, has proven itself to be yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they made a lot of boring cars in the teens, the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, sure. 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and the aughts. We don't remember those cars. We don't have to. But the cars that really meant something to us emotionally, meant something to the market, meant something to the manufacturer, they rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And so for me, my Corvair was my first car. It was an 11 year old used car, but it was an interesting car. Mm -hmm. um, in a column that I wrote for uh, Linkage Magazine, uh, I talk about um, my relationship with Porsche, which I know that this is the all Porsche all the time This network. is the P club. The, the, exactly. Yep, for, forbidden um, P word. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, actually, I was, I was looking at my watch to see how long this could go on without anyone mentioning yeah. Porsche. I think it was. I talked about the 356. Yeah, you talked yes, about yes, it yes. immediately. Yeah. We're doing that was well. like 10 minutes in. <laughs> We're doing well. Um, but <laughs> my second car was almost a 356. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is right. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so. I've loved Porsches for a very, very long time. They really sit in sort of the core place of what I admire most about a car. First of all, it's the design. The 356 is directly derived from all of the great streamlined 1930s mm -hmm. races, which I love. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, the whole idea of maximum output for minimum input, which is what Porsche was all about, made its reputation, that really speaks to me as well yeah. yep. and spoke to me for a very long time. So um, so there was that and I've had all sorts of cars that were needed to be practical living in New York City for most of my life. You need to have a car that's practical which is why I came very, very, very close to having a Citroen SM, one of my all time dream cars, <laughs> which I, I didn't actually. This is it's a, a this very is, Donald car. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, it's a Donald Absolutely. car. It is, it, is, it is on the list, the, the, the top on my list, strangely enough, uh, as a car which I will own is a first series Maserati Quattro Porte. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful Frua design, four door, the world's fastest four door at the time. And just the concept that today you sort of take it for granted. Oh, sure, 130 mile per hour four door sedan. Uh, not then, not, not in 1963. Right, right. And so that's also on my list. But uh, I'll just tell, the, tell briefly the SM story. In 1986, I bought new, actually, I'll tell another story that relates to this. In 1986, I bought a Mitsubishi Montero. Mm -hmm. They had first been introduced to the market. And uh, it was the car that I owned for the shortest time ever. I had it for a month and a half. Wow. It was horrible. It had, somebody thought it would be a really great idea to put in this car because it was an off-roader. Yeah. A suspended seat like they yep. have in an 18-wheeler. Oh, so imagine I like this. driving that it's in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. You, felt, you felt like you were, you were on an ocean. You yep. kept rolling. And of course, it had uh, a wonderful uh, both altimeter and, and attitude um, uh, yep. Attitude real. Attitude. Well, attitude. I'm pissed at you yeah. driving this car. How sassy, <laughs> How sassy is Donald today? It was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> so, um, so I had this thing that this is absolutely awful. Um, and they were also, of course, because they were just introducing Mitsubishi to the U.S. market, they had great incentives to buy it. So sure. I got a great discount over list. And at the same time, Alfa Romeo had introduced the Milano, 75 in Europe. And I thought, yeah. ah, this is so cool. This is an amazing car. So I traded my Montero after a month and a half in for a new Milano. Milano. That actually gave me more for the trade-in than I paid for the Montero. So that worked out quite well. And so I'm driving my Milano, and I bought it from a dealer in Manhattan called Zumbach Motors, the mm -hmm. world's worst dealership ever. <laughs> um, they were a great legacy dealership. They had been the place where you bought your Alfa Romeos, you had your Bugatti serviced, all yeah. this stuff. Was Legendary. it on 10th Avenue? Was exactly. It? Yeah. Precisely. And so I bought this car, and I loved my, my, New York my guy Milano. Over here. That's Absolutely. where all the dealerships are. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> loved my Milano, drove it all around, and I'd had it for just about a year, and I brought it in for a service, and I'm chatting with one of the salespeople there I'd gotten to know, and uh, we were talking about cars we loved, and I mentioned the Citroen SM. She said, oh, my husband and I have an SM. I said, really? What do you think about selling it? I said, well, I don't know. And of course, even though I was years away from working as an appraiser, I still follow the market. I knew what, what cars were worth. So I knew that the value of an SM, which was then, again, a 12-year-old used car, was about the same as my Milano, as a one-year-old car. So I said, you want to do an even trade, my Milano, for your SM? Maybe I'll talk to my husband about it. They lived uh, in Princeton, New Jersey. I drove down to Princeton, 
gotten to That's the not uh, like Morristown, is it? No, okay. it's, oh, what it's, a it's, horrible it's, place. <laughs> <laughs> that place is what, a dump. That's a story a, for another day. What a exactly? Yeah. Exactly. Never in my life. That's that's a, that's a story for 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 at least. 12,000 no. feet. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a prop airplane. I love yeah. you, Sean. Uh, so, no, Princeton is not like Morristown. But, um, <laughs> kind of is. Uh, well, it is sort of, but slightly more historical and yeah. whatever. But, eh, um, so way uh, better is what you're so, saying. Exactly. Um, it's got a university there. People may have heard of. Bulletproof my windows. Um, <laughs> dump. So I get down to Princeton. And I get to this uh, SM, which is white with a brown interior, brown leather interior. And anyone who's never seen an SM, you have to look at the seats. The seats are the most mm. remarkable thing. Yeah. They're like yeah. these amazing um, leather uh, recliners. Ooh. Absolutely amazing thing. And so I get into the car, and it's a five-speed manual, of course, because I want to have an automatique. And so I go out for a drive in the car, and of course, they have those wonderful button brake pedals. So there's no travel in the brake pedals about pressure. Yep. Really? About hydraulic, uh, really? Pedal. Yes. Um, it's very so Italian. I take it out and I'm taking it for a drive and I get to the first stop sign, stop the car, and the guy says, oh, how many of these have you driven? I said, never, just the first time. I said, wow, you were born to have this car. It's absolutely amazing. You, nobody's had that kind of feel. They're not great. <laughs> so I get back to the house. We agreed to do the deal. Fantastic. I drive back to Manhattan. And of course, you live in Manhattan, you park in a public parking garage. Right. So I announced to the attendant at the parking garage, oh, I'm getting a new car. I said, really, what are you getting? I said, a Citroen SM. I said, oh, you can't park that here. We don't take exotics in this garage. Oh, boy. <laughs> then I call up the insurance company and say, well, I'm getting this car. Okay, what are you getting? A Citroen SM. Oh, well, you've just paid the premium for the Alpha, so we'll cover your new car for the period of your premium, but after that, we won't cover the car. So I'm thinking, okay, I could get the car and not have a place to park it or a way to insure it. Uh, then I realized... Hmm at that moment and for many years afterwards that God was looking out for me. The idea of running an SM as an everyday car in Manhattan in the, 19, in the 1980s would have been insane. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> rough. So again, just like I was saved from a very bad 356 um, back in the 70s, I was saved from this wonderful uh, SM, but I will have one one day. So would you call the guy and we're like, um, not happening. Oh, he he understood completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. It's, it's what can you do? So is that the is that the one that got away, or is there another car? It's like, oh, shoot, I wish I had. Maybe not a deal that you missed or something like that, but just a car from a period for a price that you would say, that's the one I wish I had. This is a six-hour podcast, correct? That's right. We can uh, make it as I long need as you one. want. No, I, I a, need one. Yeah, I need one. For me, it was oh in sophomore year of high school if only i wasn't sitting in math class and i had five grand to buy an e30 or like me like in like the seventh grade during like the housing crisis yeah, it's like, like last oh, year if only if i, only I bought real yeah, estate i know if only i bought Dang. real estate you know yeah. in seventh grade shoot <laughs> if only i had 20 cash for clunkers <laughs> I don't know. what was your miss story sean my miss car um i don't know if i've i i i, 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 I did test drive an e30 and like when was that probably M3? here's the thing what's E30, the generation M3? after the e30 e36 so i drew up sorry i'm yeah. offending you, you guys did you hear the tone in our voice <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i was yeah. Like, sorry it's, it's not like, even isn't it a dot four two point oh yeah yeah oh. so i I'll, drove an e30 i'll get into the dots if you want oh. no 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 so I, this no. had to have been this was probably like 2000 come on continue sean Keep 2009 going. Spit no, it out. Yeah, come on. So um, <laughs> I, I drove. So they're drove cheap. Me, I they're just cheap drove, at yeah, this cheap point. E30. For everyone who doesn't know, 2010, bottomless pit. E30 M3s, 10 grand. Go ahead. So I drove an E30 M3, but then I drove the E36, which is much. It you drove an nearly. E30 M3. And then right <laughs> after, because they, they had both for sale, okay? <laughs> and the E36, <laughs> 10 times better of a car <laughs> driving. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, yeah, but yeah. I didn't buy it. Uh, okay. I'm going to break in here and actually answer the question which they asked yeah, me. Yeah, well, <laughs> well then was, you asked but, me a but, question. No, so. I, I did, I did. Well, let's go uh, back to Sean. It was a foolish idea, I realize. Um, but that's okay. In about two minutes, I'll be walking off the set in a huff anyway. Yeah. But um, isn't that, is it three minutes? I'm sorry. I, I know it's scripted when I'm supposed to walk no, off no, the set. No, no, we're good. We have plenty of time. you got 15 minutes to know. So I got a question for Donald after this. This is, as I said, there are actually too many. Uh -huh. For me to list uh, the most recent one, let's just talk about that. I need the one. I don't want. I don't want. 
I don't want you to dip around the question. This is what is the card? It's like a presidential debate. I am. I am. I am here with. I am here. The one. You're saying the one. The one that got away. You know. I met her in college. It's all. It's all over. That's great. That's another sad movie. The. I'm sitting here with three distinguished gentlemen, ostensible car guys. The most distinguished gentlemen. How many? How many? Three indeed. How many times have you been asked? What's your favorite car? I sent question, it to Sean is, last night on Instagram. Which is unanswerable. No, nope, I got my it's answer. I have an answer. I got my answer. You can have your favorite car for this moment in time, this second. That can change. No, I've, I've got my answer. You're not car people. You're not car people. I'm sorry. This is the you moment. You've got to have an answer. Fantastic. This is the moment when I walk off the set in a huff because I'm sitting here <laughs> with three people who are not car people. Wow. If that you are someone who is bait. only Porsche, only Corvette, only Ferrari, yep. only Aston Martin, only... Uh, Austin Healy, you are not a car person. Sorry, I, Oof. Donald Bosley, I, have declared that you are not a car Oof, person. I have you a, heard it here. I, I so, so a car got away. <laughs> yeah, <come on. laughs> we're, we're done. We are beating around so, the bush. My, my favorite Actively. car of all time is the Ferrari four five eight. It's been my favorite car it's since when it came out in two thousand and eight mm-hmm. or two thousand nine. I love that car. That being said, you mentioned Austin Healy, one of the most fun car experiences I've ever had is driving a uh, bug eye Sprite and yes the 458 is amazing but when you get in a bug eye Sprite and you can literally go full throttle everywhere and bang through the gears and take turns if like, Antonio was a car he'd be a bug eye Sprite <laughs> <laughs> well slow cars that feel fast are much more fun than fast cars than fast cars that well, feel slow that, oh, uh, oh, oh 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 so uh, this yes. is great that this is actually recorded. I agree so Sean with you. Can't deny this later. Right. I agree I with you. Though. Opinion. Keeps you yeah. out of trouble. You so, can't. So um, it is. There is a car, and you all should look this up because you'll have to study, just like these guys have to study on occasion. An Oscar, an Oscar sixteen hundred yep. GT. Um, this car was uh, delivered new to what? a member of the Ferragamo family in, in Italy. Oscar, what kind of car is an Oscar? <laughs> is it, what are you, a grouch? <laughs> he's getting some sort of award or something. <laughs> some Oscar. <laughs> esatto. È un premio, questo Oscar. Um, what does Oscar stand for again? Officine, Costruzione, Speciale, Automobili. There you go. That's what you say to well, women sort at of. the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that was that Oxa, way. with but a twinkle it's fine. in your eye. Yeah. So Oscar 1600 <laughs> GT. Oscar 1600 GT, um, and it was offered at auction uh, by a major auction company uh, a couple of years ago. It uh, failed to sell. But, mm. eh, okay, it's a really neat car. I don't need this car. It came up at auction with another auction company, and I looked it over and I thought, oh, this is really a neat car. And then I made the mistake of taking it out for a test oh, drive, no. thinking there's got to be something wrong with this car so oh, that no. I will drive it and I will hate it. I loved it. It was absolutely amazing. It was everything I wanted it to be, and I've always loved Oscars. Was Pavarotti pay, like playing in the back of your head while you were driving it? It was. Uh, the it time was, machine it was, was. It was absolutely amazing. Yes, Pavarotti was singing um, uh, "Come in del di di maggio" from uh, Andrea Chenier. It was absolutely it's my astonishing. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I listen to that at the drive through McDonald's. Up. Look that up. <laughs> Can you sing um, it for us? <laughs> it's a tenor aria, but come and believe he That's the one. It's a wonderful. Anyway, so I'm driving this car. It's absolutely terrific. Bring it back to the uh, auction company. But, okay, no worries. Yeah, it's, uh, someone else is going to buy it. It fails to sell. One of the auction company specialists comes up to me, kneels me on and said, the owner is really motivated. Make an offer. The car could be yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't need it. I don't, I don't need it. I can't do it. So I said, let me think about it. Said, really? What, what, year you is this? what, you what year is this? This year. Oh, this was this year. Oh, oh. my. <laughs> and so, where was this? Um, and where was it? Yeah. In Scottsdale. Who uh, January. Okay. And uh, I so um, I thought about, thought about, thought about, but, you know, okay, this is how I can make this work. So... I was about to call the specialist up when a very good friend of mine, who happens to live in Scotts, will say, hey, you know what I just did? I just bought that Oscar in the sale. I said, you did what? <laughs> and so he actually oh. sends me pictures, texts me pictures. Oh, I took the Oscar out today. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, that, that's, that's the one. Well, well so hey. has there been a moment with uh, your valuation service company where you went to go look at a car and you're, you're like, you know, I need to, I need this car. 
Ooh, that's a good question. Were you like, okay, because, you know, you've probably seen, uh, obviously without... Sir, breaking, it's worth nothing. I'm your attorney. I know I'm Sell your attorney. The car. I'm, your, I'm your attorney today, but without breaking uh, attorney or client privilege, what uh, was well, there? I'm, was there a car that you were like, I can't believe this? I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, one of the things I am an accredited senior appraiser with the American Society of Appraisers, and the Code of Ethics clearly states, as does USPAP, the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, that as an appraiser. Say that four times fast. Exactly. Who's Pap? Who's Pap? Um, I cannot <laughs> buy a, a, a car that I have appraised unless I state in the report that I have an interest in this car, which uh, I must state to the owner of the car, uh, because obviously there would be a conflict of interest. Correct. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so if someone approaches me about a car that I think I might like, I will refer it to a colleague to do the appraisal if I want to buy the car. Mm. Interesting, um, okay. And that has happened on a couple of occasions, not many occasions, um, and it is something that, it's one of the things that my collection, as the years go on, gets smaller and smaller and smaller, for a couple of reasons. One, because, first of all, in this position, <laughs> I have access to 400 cars, so I don't have to own 400 cars, I can drive other people's cars. It's a, uh, it's a thing that I learned from my friend Wayne Carini years ago, because he made his reputation as a restorer of Ferraris and people would often ask him, oh, so how many vintage Ferraris do you have? He said, none. <laughs> I've got Smart friends man. and clients that have the Ferraris, I can drive them whenever <laughs> I like. And so um, I lust less after every car that I see than I used to. Right. Um, I still get the chance to appreciate them and occasionally to drive them. And so I think that sort of satisfies that. Well, in that. Williamsburg, I saw you drive a pretty special car. Indeed. Um, I drove a uh, 1988 uh, BMW M5. I'm talking about a different one. Um, oh. What, the Genesis? Didn't I? Ah, no. yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, the Genesis. The Genesis. <laughs> um, yeah, it was actually one of the most, people, people have asked me uh, what the most extraordinary drives you've ever had uh, have been. I've had some really extraordinary drives, I'm grateful to say. That one was on the, in the top 10 list and probably the top five. Whoa. Um, it's a uh, 1957 Ferrari 250 GT Tour de France. Oof. And the 250 GT Ferraris are amazing cars. Um, Ferrari made such a leap forward between the 212 and 340 to the 250, which is the first real car that you could actually drive on the road with satisfaction. It's not just a raw race car. And the TDF, what really shocked me, I've driven a number of 250 GT variants. Um, my favorite is probably the 250 GT Lusso, which is mm -hmm. everything. It's, it's mm -hmm. a car that's comfortable, luxurious, and makes this sound. But the TDF was just on another level. The car was so fast and so comfortable, it gave you immediate uh, confidence and a what, car that handled really well. We were following it amazing. for a while. Very, very well, nimble. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen Bruno, who owns the car, is a good friend. Stephen and Kim Bruno. Stephen is also a very good driver. Mm. He he knows how to dial his cars in to yeah. make sure he can get the most out of it. And he's someone who's not afraid of driving his cars. No, right. not at all. Um, he took the car on our Williamsburg tour. He was then going to do the uh, Millimilia warm up, and he's going to take it to uh, Cavallino to be judged. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you know it's everything. It's the car that's driven. The car is absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's incredible! Um, it's the only green one too. It's the only oh. green one. It's a very late car. It's like one of two single louver TDFs, yep. and um, it's an extraordinary car to drive. And literally, I think that that you guys somebody took pictures of me when i was driving back in and i think that probably my cheeks were bleeding yeah. from the well, smile well i saw you pulling face. out and i was like uh oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i actually have a, so I have a shot of you on the drone as you left the oh, drive you do? oh yeah. my gosh yeah. oh my gosh yeah it was yeah, extraordinary was... the other thing that was great about that car that drive and steven is the fact that when you drive a car like that, there's nothing like sitting next to the owner of the car who says, no, 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 hold it longer in that gear. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. So you're like, okay, okay Steven, yeah, I, I can do that. That was me and so, Sean in my turbo. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so I have, I have a question kind of regarding to that, if you can answer it. Has there ever been, so obviously you've driven probably thousands of cars at this point in your, in your lifetime, I would say that's fair to say. Has there ever been a time where things didn't go exactly to plan? Like <laughs> like a don't meet your heroes? No, yeah, maybe maybe that or like what, has there ever been a time where like, you know, you've gotten into an accident or, or something happened like that uh. Uh, did, you didn't want to happen? Well, if again, you can answer I, I, it. I'm, I'm very fortunate in that I've actually only been in two car accidents in my life. 
Um, one was in my Corvair, <laughs> uh, interestingly enough, and the other was in my mother's uh, 69 Plymouth Satellite Station Wagon. Um, but so accidents don't really figure in my, in my driving experience, but um, I will say in terms of things not going the way you think they should, two of those came from my days uh, doing what's my car worth. And <laughs> on Amelia Island driving a um, Isetta, Mm. And I was going about 28 miles per hour. And I thought I would die. Yeah, you're going mm. about a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> and I thought those. whenever there was traffic like around, oh, please, dear God. And uh, I thought this car has no brakes, no steering, and can only go 28 miles per hour. I thought I would kill myself. Another great uh, story from those days. I was at an auction out in uh, Auburn, Indiana. <laughs> and I was driving a very famous GTO drag car that was being sold at the auction, super low mileage. So I'm driving the car along, the cameras are rolling and saying, wow, this car is absolutely amazing. It feels like a new car. And look at the speed I'm going at. Oh, isn't that interesting? The odometer isn't working. <laughs> like, Oops. <laughs> so I thought, well, we can't use that. Yep. Um, and uh, That's the, a major problem. That is a major problem. Not, we're not talking about not using the footage. We got a we got a, we got a low. problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the other thing about not meeting your heroes is very funny because, um, and actually this was something which corrected itself here on a video uh, on the network. Um, I always love the MGB GT. Because mm. I've always oh, been a big yeah. fan of yeah. MGBs. Didn't Pininfarina design this? Pininfarina, exactly. Yes. Pininfarina so designed good. it. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, that, it's a fantastic car. It's like a mini Some Aston Martin. Some of the best looking yep. small British car. One of the best ever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely look astonishing. At it, and fantastic. So I thought I drove one uh, on a rally. It was the MG Club of uh, Oregon driving to the National MG Convention in Reno, Nevada. Wow. And so... Um, Keith Martin put together a group of three cars. It was this exercise where he bought three MGs for $5,000 and made sure they were roadworthy. And we were driving them to Reno and then readers of the magazine would drive them back because oh, nobody, really? nobody's no, going yeah, to drive them. Yeah. I was going to say, you're going to sell ways. them at the convention. And so <laughs> we, we switched off between the Roadster and the, and the GT. And I was so incredibly disappointed in this GT. I thought, oh God, now that I've done this drive, I need to buy one. I, 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 I laid down and the feeling went away. Yeah. Uh, then driving the MGC here yeah. in the collection. Yeah, we drove I thought, it last wow, year. it was That's a, a fun car. That is Absolutely a fun fantastic. car. Yeah. Um, so what I would do, and I'm a big fan of honoring the original intent of the builder. Mm. In the case of an MGC, I'd probably put an MGB interior in it with the, the metal dash, the wonderful leather seats of the piping, and I'd do the sort of, not a resto mod because they're going backwards, but uh, just do this thing to give it the, the, the interior spirit to go with the performance. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny you said that because um, there's a member who is also a lender to the museum. Um, his name is Nick. He's, he's a local guy. And um, he saw the video of you driving the MG, and that was his reasoning. He saw how much you enjoyed driving it, and then he went on Bring a Trailer, and he bought one, and you were the reason as to why that he bought that car. And then I drove, That's fantastic. I drove the get car. Your commission out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> commission check. <laughs> I, uh, I drove the car back in July, and I thought it was fabulous. Super, super fun to drive. Dude, there are so many cars like that that, you know, the one that comes to my mind is a Miata. One of our members, Steve, has uh, probably the best, the best Miata I've seen. One of the best around, at least. And um, driving that even for 15 minutes was oh, like, there's so much oh fun. my God. Well, there's the so, it brings out so many feelings. Yeah. And the steering's perfect, and the clutch is perfect, well, and the sitting position is perfect. And that's it's just glorious great. about like a small two seater sports right. car. I mean, I often get shocked by cars that. I never will like I'm like oh it's cool but then I drive it I'm like that's what shocks me the most it's not cars that like you like, know you you know the new Porsche 911 yeah. is going to be yeah, amazing you whatever, sit in a but, speciale and it's, yeah, it's like, like okay, okay I'm gonna, how, yeah, I'm, it's going to be no like, problem it's going to be great but, but like it's that, like I, I, you know. I said that I, I actually passed you driving and I drove that that new Alpha that we we uh, purchased oh, at the yeah. Audrain collection whoa that I need, thing I need is to drive that car. insane whoa. I love no. that <laughs> car and it, I, it, I I always make fun I, I don't make fun of Donald but I'm like I have no yes, you do. You make fun. I have it's no fine. interest in Alfa Romeo's it's just not I like GTVs but you know they, and that is my cup of tea because you know like the Alphaholics cars whatever kind of has that vibe but that car whoa. holy yeah. is yeah. like you 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 bring up a, a great um, uh, point which goes back to my declaration directly to camera about who is an actual car enthusiast and who is not because my favorite story of car conversion 
is my dear friend, Mr. Chester, who made oh, fun incessantly of my Fiat Panda. Yeah. Didn't get it at all <laughs> until he yeah. drove it. And it's like, oh my God, I love this thing. This is absolutely amazing. And this is my point that... Well, the prick won't sell to me now. Oh, thing, wow. I, I, never. Uh, well, it's a part of my game. I'm going to actually give it to Antonio. Oh, yes. yeah, you can't buy it, but Antonio could have his gift. I am 100% uh, in the will. No. <laughs> the, this is the, not good. The, um, now I'm going to walk the, off. <laughs> in a huff. What Please. do I get? Um, you and I are going to pull up in Barry's transport and steal that panda. <laughs> it's oh, from Antonio. That's my car now. Come on. Oh, yeah. I know exactly. where it's getting right a fresh engine. Exactly. Rebuild. Precisely. Um, For me to blow I, I'm, it up. I'm doing, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> um, the, uh, the entire point, again, that we talked about when you guys first started this podcast is to share the experiences that you have in actually experiencing the cars. Again, not to diss anybody out there in internet land, but I find that the more cars I've driven, the softer my opinions become about cars that I have not. I don't know. Right. It could be mm -hmm. wonderful. Very true. And yeah. I leave my mind open to that experience. And that's one of the things, again, I'm so happy and, and grateful for the opportunity to drive these cars yeah. on the network because I get to experience so many different things. I, and you get, a, you get a true, you know, when you own a, when you buy a car without driving, you need to sell to yourself when you're driving it. That is a great driving experience. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I'm driving, yeah. it's going to be good no matter what. I've got a commitment. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I'm committed to it. <laughs> well, but uh, now we, we have, you know, we drive some supercars and you're like, oh, mm. But you, you know, can have a completely have open a completely mind about open it. Completely open mind about that is it. So like true. Donald will hate me when I say my "Don't meet your heroes" moment is right over there yep. behind Steve the yep. Bitsarini. Oh, you should. Yeah, I agree. That's because you didn't know how to drive it. All right. Con that was my "Don't meet your heroes" Con moment. You're not pronouncing it properly, Donald. Could you help him? The with Bizzarini. That? Bizzarini. 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 It's a Chevy. Spaghetti <laughs> pasta. <laughs> Bizzarini. You know, well, you, you say something that's very funny. You say something as a joke, and then I'm going to let Antonio say the thing he's been dying to say for the last ten minutes. Thank um, you. You, <laughs> you say that as a joke. But it is a Chevy, yeah. and that's not a problem. Oh, it I is, agree. It is, and I've declared this. It the is the Corvette that the Listen, engineers in Detroit let me just would say have this. built. Hey, I know. Oh. We're, we're going on another tangent. Well, here's the Bizzarini. Bizzarini. <laughs> 68. Okay, so 68. What, 68. So one of the best cars I've driven in this collection is the 67 427 yeah, that's Corvette 4 speed. That car is so freaking good Hell it is so yeah. good and I, I told mike the other day that car sold me on corvettes that car is the quintessential corvette gentlemen and i use the word very loosely <laughs> incorrectly gentle. i'm not gentle and i'm not a man <laughs> no, <we're laughs> gentle boys i offer you this challenge since i don't own either car yeah take both cars on one of our favorite roads here which i will not mention but you know the road near the beach that has a spectacular my favorite turn in all of rhode island a wonderful right-hander that the car settles down a hill slightly off camber. Take both those cars at 65 miles listen, per hour and you tell me which one listen, you like better. here's the problem. Until you do that, sir. Listen. Uh, sir. Yeah. Sir. Put yourself in my shoes. Sir, no, no, sir, no. Sir, no, sir, no I, until you do that, I think we have nothing to discuss. It, here, yeah, so gentlemen, wait uh, Antonio had something to say. We're missing the Antonio. point. <laughs> We're missing the Thank point. You, Donald. <laughs> sit in the Bitsarini at my height, okay? I'm a, I'm a shocking 6'1", but when you sit in the Bitsarini, <laughs> you, it seems like you're much smaller than you are. I can't see over the hood. I can't see over the wheel. Uh, I don't dude, have I have so Stevie long feet. Feet. Listen, nah, I don't nah, have that me, problem. It's like, ci, dude, ci sono cushini per i bambini. Yeah, I need a dictionary under me. <laughs> I know said, what you're saying. You said you need cushions. I know, I need a dictionary. I need the new one that has Riz in it. Because I need all the different, all the height I can get. <laughs> well, again, with an open mind and the proper stature. That's the many problem. cars. Uh, That's, it's not the cars. <laughs> I don't fit. Ah, in. echo. So what you're saying is, during this like men's like mental health thing we're doing, is that we're the problem. Uh, listen, I'm happy to take the blame. I'm happy to hold myself accountable. But all I'm saying is, if you see me on Hinge, I'm six one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what were you going to say? <laughs> Ten minutes ago. If you can remember. If we see you on Hinge, it's like 99.9% percent .9 dudes that watch this. What? That's an, so what? What's all your right, point? All right, yeah, fair enough. So what were you going to say? Okay, yeah. so what I was going to say is like I'm not a muscle car guy and I'm always like teasing Steve about muscle cars, but one of the most fun experiences that I had this summer was after we filmed Mansions and Motor Cars at uh, High Tide um, in August, I think, mm -hmm. is I dr we had a, um, it was all Fords in that episode and I drove Hell back. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I, I drove. I'm I, a Ford guy, by the way. Yeah, Ford's no, all the way. I Road drove back boys. the uh, 
the 06 uh, Chevy Nova Deuce is my favorite. Let me get my point no. out. No. <laughs> Keep going. We got a call. No, I'm I, just <laughs> I drove. I drove the uh, 06 GT500 back to storage. Oh, the road. Oh, and yeah. I had yeah, bro. so much fun. Well, that's a king of the road too. So it, I was like, wow, I am going to go to jail if I have this car. It's it. The engine is oh. so rowdy. The gear shifter is fantastic. I mean, the interior is not pretty by any means there's not much it's nice Ford to look at it's the same but as the Ford oh, is, so, is so it's so a long. Ford no no no, no but no, no, you know no. what you're in oh, okay. is what I'm it's saying it's got the yeah, okay. you know the same yeah, the cluster as a yeah. F-150 but of that generation that car is awesome and it's on really sticky tires I think you, yeah, you we guys just put, put on? cup yeah, twos on it or something super good brakes like I'm not saying that the tires squealed a little bit but like handles really well it was the road it was the fault. that car was so much fun and i got packed to storage and i was like wow i never if i walked into this garage i never would have that never would have been my like fifth choice it wouldn't have been my 10th choice like i wouldn't have picked it but because i was forced to drive it it was i had so much fun it was awesome since i'm, awesome assi since I'm assigning drives in cars that i don't own um i also <laughs> suggest to you gentlemen drive both the 66 442 which is great car amazing. the black one it's one of the best yeah. cars i've told you yeah. and the amc amx 390 i have not driven unbelievable that. that is an unbelievable i do car. need to try the amx yeah. the 442 is one of the best if yeah. i if i drove the 442 car. i would come back from that drive my hair would be fully slicked back i would be in my wife beater and be, yeah so uh this car that i've been driving it thinks pretty good yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's on 442 and then the Oldsmobile. It ends in a vowel, right? Yeah, there you go. Mobile. I need to either learn Italian or put Dude, your plugs in. All you need to do <laughs> with Italian, just like add like O's, I's, E's here and there, and then just like, you know, I literally talk know one Italian hand. term and I like can't say it. Well, it's no, you like, can say uh, it. no, you can't say it. No, this, I can't. Is, this, is, this is the family podcast. Yes. Yeah. Get cut so far. Um, it's just like Portuguese. Just put right. yeah, right. everything's like, you know, how would you like a soda? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I just put on my sneakers. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, I I mean look, Portuguese. look, look, if we're starting the stereotype game, we can play, but let's go there. <laughs> oh, boy. Episode 36 is when it all comes to an end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a nice run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm really glad to to have been a part of your final well, podcast. It was your fault. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's your fault. It's, it's, it's really terrific. You know, I think that you've taken the podcast, the car podcast game to a place it's never been, never will be again, should never, never should have gone. Yeah. Um, in 2.5 miles, don't go there. Oh, man. Well, we're excited. Me and, well, poor Barry, we're leaving him Sorry, behind. Sorry, Barry. But next week, we're, we're going to be down in uh, Virginia filming a lot. So we're like eight, 17 or 18 car videos. Uh, yeah, we're not doing that many, but that's fine. We're certainly going to do 16. And um, it's plenty. maybe more, depending on uh, how it's the weather holds one up. One less than 17, uh, two less than 18. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, actually, I was thinking about the schedule, and uh, we're going to do definitely the cars that are on the schedule to shoot. Mm -hmm. But I think that we also need to take some time to make sure you get onto some motorcycles. We haven't had some motorcycle videos from you for a while on the network. Does that mean I need to whip are. out the suit? Yes, you need to whip out the suit. Oh, boy. oh man. It is absolutely fantastic. You know? Well, first of all, um, since you let Sean borrow the suit, uh, you might have to... Uh, <laughs> I still have it. Oof. Yeah. Might have to, yeah. like, Sean, take it in. To no full, let me no it disrespect, back. but that it, you ain't fitting in that thing. Listen, I'm losing weight. I know I know you are. Oh, yeah. But I am a small. <laughs> there, there, there are there I'm a small man. There, there, That's there. the you know I'm all, I'm only down to six DCs a day hey, now. Great, okay? great job, Sean. Yeah, but the the, <laughs> the the thing with the DC is no sugar. Sugar makes you fat, yeah, so you're so, fine. I'm good. So we're all set. No hey, problem. Great it's job. Great job. Cut but, to yeah, when yeah, Sean and I fun. were talking about getting Taco Bell for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Something really hard, awesome. smart menu. But yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun, and I I really do enjoy those sort of those marathon days so mm -hmm. cars back to back to back to back and um obviously also getting a chance to do something again which we um do down there is do ride-alongs yeah so we have yeah. great uh, dialogues about the cars and uh, we get to see actually on camera ben chester's mind actually opening <laughs> while you watch it's astonishing or it's just like i'm really good at goes off and like pure <laughs> boredom <laughs> i think this You're time i think this time me and antonio should drive and scare the crap out of you. 
I think Donald. I've got Jay Leno for that. I actually don't need you guys. Donald for that. should. Fine. I think we should do a video on like a, the Bruff Superior or something, and Donald should ride in the sidecar. That's oh, in the sidecar. I think we were going to say Donald ride the motorcycle, and I was like, that's a horrible idea. How no. do you say in English, um, uh, <laughs> never going to happen? <laughs> With the fuel tube? Uh, yeah. Um, it's very funny, because I, I see all the time, actually, we uh, did a video on uh, exhibition highlights of the exhibition that's in the uh, museum, uh, Stars of 30 Drain Exhibitions, and we talked about the motorcycles. And, of course, some of our great loyal uh, viewers uh, wrote, that's pr- Donald, you've got to get onto a motorcycle. <laughs> and you know you don't want to sort of respond to that. Thank you so much for your care, um, but you know it's just not. So you can't write no. I'm not saying no, but mm, never, no. dude. That's like I don't know. That's the thing with motorcycles is, and of course, obviously they're dangerous, and a lot of people so have cars, though. been affected mm. from the negative effects of motorcycles. But every time I tell anyone I ride a motorcycle, it's always like, oh, or. Are you in a Are you in a gang? Do you do 150 mile an hour wow. wheels? Uh, excuse me, but you have to answer yes because I'm here on this podcast. This is your gang. <laughs> that is true. And yes, you do 150 some, mile per hour wheelies. Some, I've seen you do it right. The gang. What would the yeah. Ducati gang look like? Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of guys with mustaches. Dude, it, like would, yeah. it would be a bunch of guys like me in the suits, and then <laughs> you're just like just doing the walk, like I saw Goodwood. <laughs> People talk about like, you know, your stereotypical, like, you know, like the Italian culture, cars and espresso in <laughs> Italy. I will never forget the most Italian thing I've ever seen was in Rome. Guy's coming through an intersection. He's on a moped. He is um, running a red light. A he's got phone. an earpiece on, <laughs> on his cell phone. And he's going like this on the phone with a cigarette in that hand. <laughs> It was like it was magical. It was like I need that saying. framed in my living room, dude. <laughs> how can you talk on the phone without using your hands? I, I mean, know. So he, it was like yet. it was just incredible, and I was, it just stopped me in my tracks. The, I, I I also saw something similar like that. The American mind cannot comprehend. Um, we were in Florence, and I and there was a guy who went by on a scooter, and he had uh, he was sitting, and he had this like blonde chick who wasn't sitting on the back. She was like sitting like right here. She's like Love all like for him. lovey and dovey all over him. He's like riding through the thing, and I'm just like, this wow. looks like one of those posters from the '60s, like advertising oh, Vespa. Incredible. Ben's like my dream. I could never. <laughs> I'm so uncool. I would never be able to pull it off. Don't ever. Don't don't ever say that about yourself that you're uncool. Let us say that. Yes, <laughs> that's right. I see he it is too so daily. uncool. He could never get away with that. Yeah. Well, it's like, again the word, a word I want to say. I can't say it. So exactly. God. So. Mm. But it's been Scroll great up. having you, Donald. Scroll yeah, up. we enjoyed it, it's, this. It's been great um, uh, being here. This is your what episode? Thirty. The wow. Thirty sixth and the 36th. last. Excellent. So uh, <laughs> you know, if I had said what I wanted to say, call, call, <laughs> call me back again uh, for your seventieth. Uh, I'd like to uh, we do see you all. About you all less than um, that. Well, well, no, I think nice. that that. that um, by the seventieth broadcast, I think that Antonio's mustache will have come in, <laughs> and uh, you know that that'd be something Let's to celebrate, to something to see. Everyone, everyone, be quiet for one second. Listen, I'm going to prove to you that I have a mustache because I'm going to rub my mustache hairs on the mic. That's just <laughs> <laughs> Thank wow. you, Donald. You're welcome. That was just your lip. <laughs> <laughs> Mark that microphone. Uh, yeah, never to be used by anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Donald, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really it's been a great we appreciate it. Not at all as painful as I thought it was going to be. Oh God! Some for of us appreciate you being here. So I do. <laughs> I appreciate you. Donald. <laughs> ben, ben doesn't. I do. I Don't. just get. I just get a lot of Donald. <laughs> can never get too much. If you're really close with Donald, you call him Don. You. Can, oh. oh boy! <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Oh boy! Wait no, before no, no. before we end. Before we end, can we talk about that? You, oh. you are you are Donald and you're respectful because you never correct anyone but you but like, we know you like Donald yes, just like I you know I don't care if people call me Tony but like I like Antonio it's your name it's my name but so I, I often find it funny when people are like hey Don how honestly are you? honestly this brings up Close personal uh, this friends. brings up a thing because we got two Ben's around here and this is like when someone calls me Ben Chester like earlier Sean says me and Ben Chester it's like Sean we're in the same room okay <laughs> <laughs> there's only <laughs> you've got though. one of those last names where it's like flows I'm just ben saying Chester. Ben, ben Chester Ben Chester it's, it's not dude, like I'm just saying yeah. Ben Chester Donald Chester. I'm just saying these f-
fucking But anyway, headphones. we're on the same page. We're on the same page. Anyway, I'm good job, related. everyone. Great job. That was it. Well, we never talked about the, the whole Don thing. Yes, we did. I don't know. Like, I want to. That's wanna, how we're going to end I it. I want to hear some complaining. feedback from the guy whose His name, name is, is Donald. actually Donald. My name is Donald. <laughs> if you're a friend of mine, <laughs> you can call said. me Donald. <laughs> and if you're a really good friend, call me Donald. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks, Don. <laughs> hey Don, thanks for joining us. It's been great being with you, Sean. You're welcome. <laughs> when well, I'm the liked one, that's pretty. That's a low bar. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Show him respect. He's the face of the uh, network. Okay. Well, we really appreciate uh, you coming out today, Donald. And um, you know, we hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Let us know your favorite story from the podcast put something in the comments hit the like button we need all that to help us get to episode number 37 thanks that was a nice rehearsal when are we going to do it